Welcome to episode 13 of my guide to video game history. Firstly, I must apologise for all those eagerly awaiting my video on the Amiga and the Atari ST. That will be next episode, I promise. But I felt I had to squeeze in another look at the arcades first, for the Amiga and Atari ST episode to make sense. And what another bumper episode we have with us looking at the, all the arcade games released from 1988 through to 1991. So, without further ado, let us begin. Ed Logg, he of Asteroid, Centipede and Gauntlet fame, would come out with the inventive blaster called Zybots in 1987. The game was one or two player, and had you play John Major Rock Hardy or Captain Ace as you would traverse the maze-like underground and multi-city that the dastardly Zybot robots have taken over, and ultimately take out the master Zybot himself. The game is really good addictive fun, with surprisingly good pseudo 3D visuals for the time. Also, the arcade version joystick could be twisted left and right to turn the player, making the controls quite intuitive. Konami this year would release the brilliant 88 games, or Hypersport Special as it's also known. This was a great sequel to the track and field and Hypersport Olympic arcade games, and this really is one of the best Olympic arcade games ever, with much better cartoon visuals and nine classic Olympic events for you to partake in, such as sprint, hurdles, long jump, archery and skeet, to name but a few. Also this year, Sega's Makoto Uchida would release Altered Beast, which had you control a Greek warrior who is resurrected by Zeus to rescue his daughter Athena from the demonic hordes. The game was five levels of bash mythological mayhem as you punched your way through zombies and myth-like creatures. The Tad Corporation this year released a brilliant Cabal game. This was published by Taito in Japan and Fabtech in the US and Europe, and in the game you and a friend can take on the might of an army single-handedly in this great pseudo 3D looking blaster. What was great about the game was the walls in which you could take cover behind, diving out to continue with the onslaught. This year would also see the brilliant police chaser called Chase HQ by Taito, and had you play Tony Gibson and partner Raymond Brody as they race around in their black Porsche 928 taking down the bad guys. The game really captured the exciting police chase action as you try to catch up with and then smash the criminals off the road within the time limit. Double Dragon 2 The Revenge would make a welcome return by Technos in 1988. This was essentially more of the same, with you still playing Jimmy and Billy Lee. Brothers, who again are set out to fight the Black Warriors, after their boss, Willy, has killed your friend after your success in the first game. After the fantastic success of Ghost and Goblins, Takuru Fujiwara and Capcom was back with another sequel called Ghouls and Ghosts. This was more of the same platinum hard King Arthur lance throwing action, but with much better graphics and sound. This year also saw the first full on 3D driving game in the arcades called Hard Driving made by Atari. This really was something quite special when it was released, with its immersive sit down cabinet and real gear shaft force feedback steering wheel that meant kids could almost feel like they were doing realistic driving. The game was made even more exciting by the option of a stunt track to complement the race one, which had to perform loop the loops and attempt to run over cows. The instant replay feature of the game was also great, letting you see your crashes from different camera angles. Tato this year in 1988 released a brilliant cute platform shooter called New Zealand Story, where you play Tiki, the cute yellow kiwi who lives with all his friends in Auckland Zoo. The trouble is that a hungry walrus has kidnapped you and all your kiwi friends for his dinner. Tiki manages to escape, and so armed with his bow and arrow goes on a quest to rescue all the fellow cute 
Kiwis. The game itself was stacked with neat touches such as flying balloons and bear heads and the overall impossible cute beasties that you had to take out. 1988 would see Yu Suzuki return with the buggy off-road racer called Power Drift. In the game you had to ride around the wacky stunt fuel tracks taking on one of 12 races. What was great about the game was each of the races had their own character and driving style. This element of having each racer being distinct was quite unique for the time and really added to the fun as you were overtaking actual races as opposed to faceless cars. It's just a shame that the track's madcap roller coaster designs meant that sometimes you could get quite confused at what was going on. This year also saw Robocop. Ah, one of the classic arcade games released in 1988 by Data East. The game was based on a great unexpected hit film about a cyber cop. Publisher Ocean had spotted the film script early on and had snapped up the film license, even before it was filmed. Therefore, in this clever move, they allowed Data East to use the license to write an arcade Thank game, you for your with the understanding you are under that Ocean arrest. would have all the home conversion rights. Robocop would turn out to be one classic arcade blaster that really captured the look and feel of the film. This year, Shadow Warriors, or Ninja Gaiden as it was known in the West, was released by Tecmo this year. Bizarrely, Gaiden means side story in Japanese, and yet this isn't a side game of any series. However, the game was an okay scrolling beat-em-up that mixed together the fighting of Double Dragon with the fighting style of a ninja. Tecmo this year would also release Silkworm, which was a great shooter. One of the nice touches of the game that it was a two-player with one taking control of the helicopter and the other taking control of the jeep. This meant that both players would experience the levels completely differently. It also meant there would be a fight on to see who would play the helicopter, as that was much easier to play than the Jeep. Namco in 1988 would satisfy the horror fiend in all of us this year with a gore-tastic Splatterhouse game. In the game you play a Jason-like hockey mask dead student called Rick, who rises from the grave to rescue his girl Jennifer and kick some serious demonic butt. The game was really one of the first gore games released, and although quite tame by today's standard, back then it was as close as we kids could get to being in a horror movie. Atari this year released Tubin, which had you play Biff or Jet who race each other down some wacky rivers and rapids full of mad characters who try to block your way. This is a really fun two-player game, as you each try to make it across the checkpoints first. In the following year, in 1989, Capcom and Yoshiki Okamoto's team would release Final Fight, which really took the scrolling beat'em up to the next level. The game was originally called Street Fighter 89, but was going to be a spin-off sequel of the first Street Fighter game. In the game, you play either Mike Hager, the ex-wrestler Mayor, or his friends Guy and Cody, who go on a quest to rescue Hager's daughter, who's been by the evil Mad Gear. The game was groundbreaking for the time with its massive sprites and multitude of moves. The game really did set the benchmark for all scrolling beat em ups to follow. 1989 would also see Golden Axe released by Sega's Makoto Uchida, who would be back again after the phenomenal success of Alter Beast. The game was another scroll beat em up, but this time set in the Conan like fantasy world, where you could choose between one of three heroes. There was a barbarian called Axe Battler, a dwarf called Gilius Thunderhead, or the Amazonian warrior called Tyrus Flare. Each have had their mother, brother, and parents killed by the evil Death Adder and want to seek revenge. The game was stacked full of neat ideas, such as the thieving goblins who steal your magic, to the weird dragon-like bird beasts that you could ride as you made your way through the magical world. 
Leyland Corporation this year released the brilliant Iron Man Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road game, which perfectly took the idea of Super Sprint but set it in the off-road dirt track and dirt truck arena. The game perfectly captured the bump-ridden tracks and so made the game so much more fun to play. That's the end of part A, please go on to part B.